Our presenter for the 9 a.m. time slot is Benjamin Martin. He is from Hershey, Pennsylvania, and will be sharing with us their capstone project, Integrating Smart Weight Training into the Mainstream. Please join us in welcoming them. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to share my screen here. Okay. Like she said, my name is Benjamin Martin, and today I'm going to be presenting to you my project for Gearhead Athletics in partnership with them, and it's going to be smart resistance exercise equipment. So today we're going to be walking through my brief, my user personas that I use to kind of gauge where I wanted to go with the project. Um, we're going to look at what's currently on the market, the current offerings of products, and we're going to take a look at how that compares to what I want to design. We're going to then look at my process and my ideation and how I came up with the solution to my proposed problem. And then we're going to actually take a look at that solution. So we're going to look at the, um, the design that I came up with. And then after that, we're going to then um, take a look at some costs of manufacturing and then just come back to my brief and see how I solved the brief. So without further ado, when we're not in a pandemic, what are the things that intimidate you the most from going to the gym? For a lot of people, it's looking like this. So it's looking like you're failing, it's looking like you're struggling, it's looking like you don't know what you're doing. So basically, the things that the gym boils down to, to the two things that you need is knowledge and consistency. So knowledge is the thing that's going to give you the confidence to go in and do a workout without looking like a fool, or at least what the user thinks is looking like a fool because um, I don't believe that anybody can look like a fool in the gym. But um, so knowledge and consistency are those two things that we kind of need to have effective work. So from now after I turn that, I then set my brief. So my goal is to design a group of resistance training equipment that will make the user feel more comfortable with knowledge as well as any the performance in the gym. So the three things that I'm going to focus on are comfort, knowledge, and performance in the gym. So I want to make the user feel more comfortable, knowledgeable, so that they can feel more comfortable, and then in the end, enhance their performance. So from there, I set out to do some user interviews and set some user personas. So we're going to take a look at them now. The first one here is Brad. And let me see if I can move. There we go. The first one here is Brad. He is 36 and he works in marketing and he doesn't like gimmicks. So what that means is he just wants to come into the gym, have a workout already planned by a trainer and just do it. He doesn't want anything that's like a new um, machine that has any random gimmicks on it. He just wants to go in, get the workout done and go about the rest of his life. So he needs consistency in planning. He was actually one of my clients. I'm a personal trainer. And um, the two things that he really needed was a plan and to go to the gym consistently consistently which a personal trainer provided for him so he is a firm believer that he can't see his own flaws he has a hard time seeing them he needs someone else to see them so um, that was kind of a key insight when designing this kind of smart resistance training machine that's gonna see your flaws um, and lastly he has a hard time seeing himself so in the fitness community we call that proprioception so that's that word down there. And that's a big scary word, but that's basically just to say that in your head, you can visualize where you are in space. So if you put your arm out in front of you, if your eyes are closed, you can know that your hand is right in front of your face out in front of you. So it's helpful for when you're doing like a back squat and you need to know if your back is rounded or it's too arched or something like that. So that's just a key thing that I pulled out of this interview um, because in partnership with Gearhead Athletics, they have a series of sensors that actually does that for you. It senses points on the body and can accurately tell you what the problem is. So moving along to our next user persona, we have Natalie here and she is an avid gym goer and she's also a student. She's looking for new ways to challenge herself. So she isn't necessarily new to fitness. Um, so she needs variety. She needs something new. Um, and when it comes to buying any fitness products for her home or going to a gym and using a fitness machine. She looks for durability and a simple inf interface. So all of this means is if it's something she's buying at her house, it needs to wear well. It can't be um, cheap. It needs to have good durability. So 
The second thing was the simple interface. When she goes to the gym and sits on a machine, she doesn't want to have to read a long paragraph on the machine about how to use it. She wants it to be straightforward. So that just goes hand in hand to the need something good for beginners. Even though she's not a beginner, um, she just wants to feel like it's uh, simple to tackle. Next we have Pat and he is a big box gym owner. So I interviewed some people that were um, actual users and then I interviewed some people that were going to be actually purchasing the machine. So um, he's a big box gym owner so they have a bigger demographic and they have um, higher price points and they have more amenities. So one of the key insights he gave me was that your demographic matters and um, he said that those that are disabled or those that want correction but not necessarily personal interaction with another person are going to be the key people that um, use a machine like this. So this is kind of who I wanted to target was the people that need corrective exercise but they don't want the person um, standing in front of them like judging them. So he also told me um, that 50 to 70 percent of his clients would pay a premium. Now this is important um, just because um, it kind of shows me where I can place this machine in the market. So a big box gym versus a smaller gym, and we're gonna kind of look at a smaller gym here in a minute, but the, at this price point, a larger percentage of people would be willing to pay in a big box gym for a machine that I would be proposing. And lastly, he just shared my sentiment of um, this could bring an unreached group of people to fitness, and that is what he said his goal was, being a gym owner, and that's quite frankly my goal as well, is bringing as many people to the fitness community as we can, um, just for the health of people. Lastly, we have Nate, and he is a boutique gym owner. And he said that in contrast to the 50 to 70% of the larger gym, that 20% of his clients would pay a premium. So all that this shows us is that a uh, more expensive machine that I'm gonna be proposing wouldn't necessarily be priced and sold to um, a smaller gym such as this. It could be. Um, but who I want to really target is the larger big box gyms with the people that have the money to afford it. A few other insights he pointed out was that he tried to buy a Peloton bike, which we're actually going to take a look at as a competitive um, item on the market, but they sell only in home, so privately. And this was kind of just a good um, insight. This was when I was trying to piece together who I wanted to sell this item to. So um, if you sell an item privately, and then they also have it commercially in a gym, you're not necessarily gonna pay to have it in your home and at your gym. So um, it kind of steered me away of only going private. Lastly, he said that some of the popular machines were the ones that have low margins for error, they have target big body groups, and they give you the most bang for your buck, basically. So it's a thing that you can go in, get on and do, and it's gonna hit the largest muscle group without, um, with the least difficulty. So here we have just a um, set of users that I laid out. And this was just basically for me so that I could kind of see um, who I was designing for and um, who I wanted this machine to encompass. So we have starting at a beginner, then intermediate, advanced, and athlete. I wanted this to be something that a beginner could get on. They could just get um, some correction, such as just as simple as don't arch your back as much or um, don't round your back so much and simple things and then move the whole way up the line to an athlete where we would um, give them more precision as um, you have 10% too much weight on the front of your foot you need to put a little bit more onto the back um, things like that so it's just uh, basically within the computer interface of this machine it gives you um, a little bit more or less feedback uh, based on your level of fitness skill. So next we have the market and we're going to take a look at some of the competitive um, items on the market right now. And first we have the Peloton, the Tonal, and the Mirror. So we're going to take a look at each one of these now. This is the Peloton and basically it's a smart bicycle that um, has lots of smart um, equipment in it, but it's just for cardio. So that's kind of where it leaves out the resistance portion of the equipment. It doesn't have any resistance training um, involved in it. So that and the fact that it's also very expensive kind of leave a gap in the market for what I'm trying to achieve. Then we have the tonal and now this is a system that basically bolts into the studs of your wall and uses um, electromagnetic resistance to um, guide you through a workout and it has trainers on board that screen. Um, and this is also a great system. However, 
it only goes up to about 100 pounds per arm and it um, also uh, doesn't really, it stops you at that point. So you basically can't exceed any further than that. So that and that it's expensive um, kind of leaves that market gap as well to where it's great for beginners, but not necessarily for an athlete. Lastly, we have the mirror and this one is um, also a great product. It's basically um, a screen that also doubles as a mirror on the wall that um, has a trainers on board that will guide you through workouts. The problem is it doesn't necessarily have any weight training at all, any resistance training. So um, all of these basically lead us to a market gap. So in the resistance area, there's a gap. They're either, all the products on the market are either too expensive. There's no resistance training that can actually go up to a high range and that leaves us with a limited weight range. So from here, I then went and took a look at some ideation. So this is kind of where I started my process with some um, more napkin type sketches and then um, moved on to some a little bit better sketches. So we have this one here, which was uh, kind of the start. And I wanted to, I had the idea to incorporate curves into the machine. So this is basically the cable portion, the pulley system of the machine. There's going to be a few different sections that I'll explain later, but um, I wanted to give that a curve. And that basically led me to way over design how the pulley system is going to work in that curve. And I just had to kind of go back to my brief and realize that I wanted to make it easy and uh, more um, comprehensible to the user. So I kind of steered away from that and wanted to incorporate those curves somewhere else. So on the top one there, you can see that it's on the back of the rack where the bar is going to be located. And then also on the top of the rack, just for some extra reinforcement and stability. So then I then went on another round of ideation and kept um, trying to think of ideas. And basically I started playing with the idea of modularity. So I wanted to put um, one thing next to the other kind of in stations and then um, that then led me here. And this was three main stations and that's kind of where it was the tipping point of I realized how I wanted to group this machine. So I came up with three stations, the power lifting, the cable station, and then the squat and the bench station. So from there, I then took that and kind of refined it a little bit more. And instead of kind of putting them side by side, I put them one in front of the other. And you can kind of just see a glimpse of this here. We're gonna take a look at it in more detail later. Um, I also wanted to play with some type of barrier on the side of all of the equipment that would house one the screen and also serve as a little bit of a guard to make people feel a little bit more secure so they're not just set in the middle of a gym. Um, it kind of makes it not its own room, but just um, almost its own room without having to actually create another room. So with those three stations, we're now gonna take a look at each one. So this is station one and this is the deadlift area. So you can see that we have our user standing on those two footprints there. And um, that's just signifying that within the rubber mat of the floor, there's um, a weight plate, a uh, pressure sensitivity plate um, for weight. So um, this is going to be able to give the user a little bit more feedback um, to how much, where they're putting their pressure on their feet. And this is gonna be much more towards the athlete side of that range, but um, there's a pressure sensitivity plate there. And then we can see those two arrows and now, this goes back to GearHead's um, sensor system that they already are using. And I wanted to integrate two of those sensors for each station. So we have one coming from the front plane, so it's gonna be pointing at our user, and then we have come, one coming from his left. So you can see those arrows signify where the plane starts, and then that just the white framing um, shows the direction that those arrows are pointing at the user. So this is just going to enable the computer to pick up 18 points of the user's body to be able to give the feedback that we're talking about to be able to correct um, the form of the exercise. Station two then, we have the cable system. Now this is the same thing and with each station, we're just gonna walk through. We have um, the two sensors coming from the back and then the side, and then we have uh, that pressure sensitivity plate as well. So um, this is for um, any cable work, so any, exercise that you can do with a cable. And with all three of these stations combined, you basically can do almost every exercise in the gym. I mean, it is limited, um, but almost every type of exercise for any body group, um, you can basically achieve with this system. 
So station three is then the squat and the bench area. So we still have that same um, dual sensor system, one from the side and one from the front. Um, and then those pressure sensitivity plate on the floor. And uh, those footprints, once again, are just kind of to signify where the pressure sensitivity is. It's um, gonna be integrated under the um, rubber mats of the flooring. So again, with station three, here we have uh, the bench press portion of it. Again, with those two sensors, you'd be able to pull the bench in and um, utilize the different sensing system. And then obviously that barbell up on the rack can be lowered down and moved um, to accommodate that. With this exercise, you're obviously not gonna be using those footholds, but um, you can just move the bench to use them with a different exercise. So we took a look at the different stations of my machine, then we're gonna kind of digress a little bit. And this was in the portion of my um, process that I met with Bodycraft. Now they're a manufacturing company here in Columbus of exercise equipment, and they're a pretty well-known one. And I went and met I went and met with the head of Bodycraft and he gave me lots of insights. It was initially just to find out the cost of manufacturing and that was like the main goal of going and meeting with him, but I actually found out um, something that changed my project, which was a good thing. So he was talking a little bit about electromagnetics, which is what I mentioned in that tonal system with those arms um, earlier. It's basically electromagnetic resistance and I wanted to integrate that into my machine because it basically cuts down your shipping costs tremendously because you don't have to stick, ship a stack of weight. So um, I, um, the problem with the tonal system that I mentioned earlier is that the electromagnetics only go up to a certain amount of weight. And the, that's only because it's drilled into the wall, into the studs of your wall, and will rip it down if it's any further um, higher in weight. So, Basically, if you put an electromagnetic system on a uh, well-structured system and a well-structured rack, um, you can basically increase the weight indefinitely until, until the user breaks or the machine breaks. So um, there'd obviously be a cap, um, but you can basically, at a much lower shipping cost, increase the weight um, drastically. So I, this is why I wanted to go with that system. So you can see there on the left, we have um, a, box where it kind of mimics the weight stack on a current pulley system where you would put a pin in it and select your weight. Um, however, we just have that ergonomic handle and that you're just going to slide that and it's going to click into place on each um, weight. So it kind of gives the user something new, but also something old and familiar so that they can um, use in their brain to understand how to use this. Um, that's connected then to the electromagnetic system that will change the weight for that pulley. So now we're gonna take a look at Gear Central and that's what I'm calling it. It's basically this um, portion over here on the left where we have just a little bit of table for all your belongings and um, a mirror slash screen. So this is kind of the area where you're gonna walk in and you're gonna have um, all of your information already on the corresponding app on your phone and you're gonna be able to um, scan in your phone with QR code and um, it's gonna know all of your information. So. It's basically gonna know all of your past workouts, all of your stats of your body, so your weight, your BMI, body fat percentage, um, all of that stuff. And it's also gonna know the workout that you plan to do based on the input that you gave the app earlier. So this is kind of the central area where you're gonna go um, set all your stuff down, kind of log in and then start your workout. It's gonna tell you, okay, you're going to go do a bench press and then you're gonna go do 10 of them and you do you do that set and then you come back to the screen and it's going to kind of correct and show you um, what needs improvement. So that's kind of the central area where you're going to interact with and then work out and um, kind of go to. And also the area where you can keep your belongings and kind of keep them a little bit tucked away from anybody else in the rest of the gym. Okay, so now we're just gonna take a look at some of uh, the renders and how uh, this machine looks. So you can see here um, the uh, rack itself. We have um, the curves on the top and the side, and we're going to see them here in a second a little bit better. But um, we also have a multi hold pull up bar at the top, and you can see all of the structural supports of this machine enable it to um, handle all of that electromagnetic um, resistance. So we basically have um, eight uh, 
pillars of support touching the ground so that this machine's spread out and has not just four pillars touching the ground. So it's going to be pretty stable. Here's just another render. Um, we can see all of the three stations, uh, the cable station, the bench station, and the deadlift station. Here we can see a little bit of the curves a little bit better. We have the, um, the curves on the back of the rack there where the barbell is, and then we have the curves on the top of the rack um, for structural support to connect the two. And here we have just a final look at the project and we can see all of the three station, we can see Gear Central and how all of that works together. And from here, we are going to talk a little bit about, about what it all costs. So um, the cost of manufacturing, not including the sensor system, because that's kind of um, GearHead's portion of the partnership, um, the manufacturing cost, once it's landed in Columbus from a Taiwanese manufacturer, is about $1,420. So like I said, that's not including sensor systems. That's not including um, the weight stack because we're using the electromagnetic weight. It'd be a lot more with that weight stack. Um, it also doesn't account for the weight plate. Um, so that's just those circular discs that were placed on the edge of the barbell. So um, that's basically just all of the hardware of the machine. So then with my research, the price, if we would sell it to a wholesaler, would be about $2,800. So this gives GearHead a 50% profit margin. So like I said, it doesn't account for a few other costs. So this is literally just on my end of manufacturing. So it's not going to take into account a lot of other things, but this is um, the baseline of the manufacturing. So the wholesaler is basically the middleman, so GearHead would sell it to them and then they mark it up and sell it to a gym like LA Fitness. Um, so if GearHead wanted to um, take on the responsibility of selling it to gyms, they could mark it up even more than that 2800 uh, but that is up to them. So then we're going to take a look at the prices for the actual user. So the model is going to be subscription-based and that's going to be paid to GearHead and it's obviously going to be interacted with um, all through the app. And um, any extras, any extra um, above and beyond um, training plans would be purchased within the app as well. And then one other um, incentive for gyms to buy this product is that they'll be able to create an extra member tier. So all of that means is you have different tiers of membership to some gyms. Um, some include amenities such as a pool or a sauna. Some are just access to some of the gym equipment. So this would um, be make the gyms able to create an extra tier of like a higher price point um, to have access to these machines. So with that, we're going to now look back at my brief and that was to design a group of resistance training equipment that would be make the user feel a little bit more comfortable, knowledgeable, and as well as enhancing their performance in the gym. So those three things that I wanted to focus on were comfort comfortable, knowledgeable, and performance. And how I made the user feel more comfortable was really through, through that knowledge. So um, the feedback that you would get is going to be, um, make you feel like you are not just aimlessly working out. You have something holding you accountable and something showing you what to do. And that's gonna make you feel a lot more comfortable in the gym. And then along with the comfort is the um, seclusion that the machine makes. So that side panel kind of gives you a little bit of a closed off from the outside um, feel. So it kind of makes you feel a little bit more by yourself, which is what a lot of people want in the gym. So that along with all of the information that you're getting from this machine and all of the feedback, I feel like it's going to make the user feel a lot more comfortable. And then lastly, for performance, um, uh, all of the sensing systems and all of the um, hardware of this machine are geared towards performance. So um, basically you can do almost any exercise in this machine all in like a one-stop shop area and you can be um, trained by the computer to achieve your highest levels of performance. So from a hardware standpoint and from the computer standpoint, it um, really uh, achieves a higher performance. So I thank you all very much for listening to me today. You can text any questions to that number right there and I would love to answer them. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ben. We already have a few questions. Uh, one question is, you've been working with Andy Grove and Gearhead. Uh, when's the last time that they have seen this? And do you have any feedback from them? And what is their timeline for moving forward with this? Do you know? Yeah, so um, the last time that I kind of updated them and kept up with them was actually last week. Um, I texted them both. Uh, it's Andy and Tim. I texted them both um, kind of some pictures of some renders and stuff like that. And we were kind of talking about it and they kind of loved the idea and they were wondering more about the electromagnetic stuff. And yeah, they, they liked where it was going. So um, that and then you said their timeline. So basically they're at step one. So they're on basically the sensor on a tripod and this whole machine is basically on step 100. So it's definitely potentially years in the making. So um, they're, a gearhead is at basically step one. Uh, okay. And do you think you'll be involved with the process as it moves forward? Uh, potentially. Um, it really depends. But yeah, potentially. Is there a reason the bars on the back for squats are uh, curved? Obviously, aesthetically, they look good. But is there a functional reason as well? No, this is, that's, that's like one of the things that's purely for... Um, aesthetics and I did look into the pricing of it because at first I was like just to curve a piece of metal for the sake of curving a piece of metal seems like it would add extra costs and when I met with Bodycraft he was like that's that like wouldn't be a problem at all it's like it's something really easy for that Taiwanese manufacturer to do so uh, yeah purely for aesthetics and the curve wouldn't in any way interfere with the with the exercises would it no so it's subtle enough and then um, with the basically the green portion um, where the barbell is set into the rack that obviously can be moved up and down and um, whenever you're exercising you take the barbell with whatever exercise you're taking the barbell and moving it away from the rack so um, if it was like a really dramatic curve and you were doing a squat and you stepped back like a foot and it was that dramatic you would come down and hit it that would be a problem but with how subtle it is uh, no I don't think it would affect the exercise Okay. And I just want to clarify, I believe you said this in the presentation, but the footprints on the map, they're not actually going to be there, are they? No. So um, there's going to be some type of very subtle indicator that you know where to stand. So like if you take that barbell on the floor at the deadlift station and roll it like two feet forward and you're doing that deadlift there, you're not going to get the feedback um, that the machine is designed for, obviously. So there's going to be some type of indicator there. Those footprints are just purely to show you guys where the stations are. Is there an idea of how many stations a gym would buy? Um, what do you mean? Uh, do you anticipate a gym buying one of these stations, two of these stations? Uh, do you um, have any expectations? Uh, so the first, the two, the um, squat rack and the cable system uh, would definitely be bought together. And then kind of the deadlift station is basically adding extra sensors because uh, a gym has a barbell and plates. Um, so um, I'm, I'm thinking that this whole system is going to be bought together because once you have the main portion of the rack and then some sensors, you, it's not going to be a ton more money just to go the full, um, full system. Okay. Uh so how do you intend to bring people in that are new to fitness if this system is only offered as an extra tier? Uh, and could you move toward it being offered toward a wider group that uh, isn't necessarily willing to pay that premium? Okay, go back to the first part of the question, please. So the first part of the question is, how do you intend to bring people into this uh, that are new to fitness if this the system itself is offered as uh, an extra tier or as a premium? Yeah, so, um, so if we're offering this in one of those bigger box gyms. Um, this isn't necessarily going to cater to the people that are um, like college age who don't have as much money because it's definitely going to be um, something you're going to be paying for. It's not going to be cheap. It's not going to be like crazy expensive either, but it's definitely going to be more towards um, some people that have a little like a middle class family that has a little bit of money that wants to get into the fitness because um, frankly, if you're if you don't have as much money and you want to start in fitness and you want to start like in your home and stuff, that's a great place to start. Great place to start. Um, this is geared towards 
um, people of those upper tier in those big box gyms. Okay. And then uh, another question, and I believe this will be the last one. Uh, Gearhead is planning on using sensors to track movement. In your research, did you find any other groups that were planning on using sensors to do something similar? Yeah, so there is one company um, that is starting to do that. I actually called, I, in my research, I was calling them about something completely non-related and I was asking them, um, I was asking them about that concern and they were like, and I, I was telling them about my machine and what like I was trying to do. And they're like, oh, so this sounds like exactly what we're designing currently. And I was like, I didn't know that. But yeah, so there's definitely, we're at like the, basically the point where this is like the next thing in fitness is smart um, weight training. Like that's the next thing that everybody's starting to go to. And there's no one thing on the market right now, but within the next five to 10 years, there will be. Good to know that you are uh, not missing the wave, but that you are on the front edge, uh, front front of this. That's uh, it's exciting. Well, great work. Thank you so much, um, everyone. If you would join me in uh, giving Ben our appreciation, remember the reaction button at the bottom. You can hit the clap button to to uh, show your appreciation.